you know what? We can talk about sealing all we want. We can talk about the guys that were taken after. We can talk about how some of these other players might have higher potentials. But at the end of the day, I wanted to shine a spotlight on some of the guys in the Detroit Red Wing system who are proving me pretty wrong. Now, this isn't a new kind of video idea, nor are these two players people that we've never talked about before. We have made a bunch of videos about these guys, but with yesterday's Detroit Red Wings victory over the Pittsburgh Penguins, I wanted to shine a spotlight once more and include one of the guys that was drafted last year. So, let's quickly recap yesterday's Pittsburgh and Detroit game before we dive into the two players, because I admittedly did not have this game on in my household. I was watching the Montreal-Ottawa game because, yeah, very obvious reasons, I don't think anybody was able to take their eyes off of that one. But all physical penalties and body checks and headshots and injuries aside from the Montreal and Ottawa game, Pittsburgh-Detroit was a much different story. This was more so of the Pittsburgh Penguins going out there and uh, kind of taking it to the Red Wings. I mean, the Pens iced a roster that included Sidney Crosby, Evgeny Malkin, Ricard Raquel, Michael Bunting, Chris Letang, in net they had... Tristan Jari, this was a good Pittsburgh Penguins team, and they had 41 shots on goal. But the Red Wings ended up winning 2-1, with only 19 shots themselves. And the Wings iced a lineup wherein the most experienced player on forward, at least, was... I believe it was Alex Chason? Either him or Tyler Mott? Yeah, definitely a difference in caliber of talent there. Either way, the Red Wings ended up winning 2-1 over two goals scored by, firstly, Amadeus Lombardi, who had scored to tie the game up 1-1 two minutes into the second period, and then the final goal of the game was scored by Nate Danielson. With two minutes left in the third period, pretty much, he comes in on a mini breakaway assisted by Michael Branstad Newgard. He walks right in, he outweights Jari, and then he puts the puck five-hole right through the Pittsburgh Penguins' starting goaltender, and he gives the Wings the win. What a goal there for Nate Danielson, his first of the 2024 preseason. Villa Huso, by the way, fantastic. What a game out of him. A 9-7-7 save percentage. He stopped all but one of the 44 shots that he had faced in this game. Maybe Huso's a lot better than we thought he would be. Who knows? But in this video, I wanted to use this as an opportunity to showcase a conversation on the R Red Wings subreddit about that game-winning goal scorer in Nate Danielson. Take a look at this. Danger Dunk posted this yesterday. Habs fan here, watching the game tonight against the Pens. Okay, pause. Firstly, what the hell is a Habs fan doing in the Red Wings subreddit saying that they were watching the Red Wings game? The Canadiens-Ottawa Senators game was going on at the same time, and that was kind of like eyeballs glued to the screen material. Anyways, let's go back over to the post here. Watching the game tonight against the Penguins. Boy, Nate Danielson looks like the real thing. Does he have a chance of sticking it this year? I know you have Cop and Valeno at center, but this guy looks like a different class. And I wanted to read some of the replies here just to get the conversation going, talk about Nate Danielson, and slowly introduce the conversations about the other guy, too. He's looked good, but I don't think it's a bad idea to have him play all of the season on top line minutes in the AHL. Right now, I think Marco Casper probably has the edge if they're going to put a rookie in the lineup, and then Carter Mazur gets the first call-up. There's not much space on the roster. Now, this is also a conversation I wanted to bring up too, because Marco Casper, the guy whom winged wheel with a 33 instead of the E's, is saying could be the guy instead. And for Marco Casper, we have made a few videos throughout the past few weeks here, just going over his status, how good he was, and how he's been performing with the wings in the preseason so far. Marco Casper, I feel, has been nothing short of blowing away my expectations, and I feel like for Nate Danielson, he's a guy that might actually be coming up in a similar kind of way. Now, we made the video earlier last week, too, talking about how Patrick Kane said that Nate Danielson reminds him a little bit of Connor Bedard, and I don't want to go out there and say that Danielson is Bedard 2.0, that's not something that I think anybody should be thinking about if you wanted to have a healthy relationship with this team, but 
hey, Danielson is impressive. At the same level as Casper right now? Probably not. Casper was drafted in 2022, Danielson in 2023. But you gotta remember, one of the criticisms about these two guys and why the entire video was titled the way it is, is because when these two guys were drafted, the common consensus was, hey, what are the Wings doing? They're going after guys that don't have the highest ceilings in these spots in the NHL draft. They're drafting two-way caliber centers who have playmaking, goal-scoring potential, but who will probably max out as either really good second-line centers or awesome third-line centers not first-line center material. Marco Kasper went ahead of guys like Matthew Savoy, Pavel Mintyukov, Frank Nazer, Rutger McGordy, Jonathan Lekaramaki, and that was seen as a pretty strange pick. Then one year later, the same thing happened. Hey, they took Nate Danielson. What's going on here? Detroit is taking another guy who plays pretty much the same way like Kasper does. Except they're passing on Zach Benson, Matthew Woods, Samuel Hanzik, Axel Sandin Pelico, whom ironically they ended up taking themselves later on, Colby Barlow, Oliver Moore, Edward Shala. How are they passing on these guys? That's nuts. And I think now, in 2024, heading into the 2025 season, acknowledging just how good some of these players could be, and how well they've shown off in this preseason, it is kind of illuminating and encouraging, so to speak, to say that they're actually making strides in much better ways than we thought they would be. Nate Danielson was drafted a year ago, and he's playing so well to the point that, honestly, I don't know if he's, like, not ready for the NHL just yet. A little premature to say, maybe, but it is a conversation that I do think is worth having. Here's another reply. Casper is further along, Andrew Kopp is a black hole offensively, and Joe Valeno is infinitely replaceable. Joe Valeno should be traded to make room for Casper. Unfortunately, though, the Red Wings are stuck with Andrew Kopp for this year and the two after at almost $6 million a season. Danielson is going to be good for us, but Casper is ready now. And Double Jack goes out there and says this, too, which I think adds on to the conversation. Danielson could play in the league right now, and if we were as bad as the 2018-19 squad, then he'd almost be certainly on the roster. However, Casper is a year older and definitely further along. If one of them makes the team, it will be Casper. It's Casper's versatility that'll earn him a spot if he sticks around. He is a positive force at any place in the lineup. Casper is five months older and a smaller frame. Danielson has higher hockey IQ as well. I don't subscribe to the age argument in this case, another reply says. So at the end of the day, even though the Wings have two guys that are very similarly profiled in terms of their pre-draft skill sets and what their project abilities were, at the end of the day, they have them both, and now they're both looking pretty good. One has had significant experience developing in Europe and in different pro leagues. He was in Grand Rapids last season, getting 35 points in Marco Casper. And the other one, Nate Danielson, is fresh off the heels of playing in the WHL. So maybe it is a little bit premature to say that Danielson should be an NHL guy right now, but he is coming off a hot season. So, carrying that momentum over into the AHL and maybe having a season like Marco Casper did in 23-24 in 24-25 would probably be best for his development and heading into 2025-2026, at that point, maybe it's fully time to let Valeno go. Send him away in a trade, maybe trade away Andrew Kopp, maybe find a way to get JT Comfer off the team, I don't really know. And then you have Casper and Danielson both suiting up behind Larkin. There are a lot of opportunities for this Detroit Red Wings squad in the next few years, but right now, these two guys, they're showing off very, very well. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about this video topic? How Danielson and Casper, two guys whom I labeled as guys that were taken way higher than they should have been, are now looking extraordinarily good in the 2024 preseason. I'm saying here that Steve Eiserman is proving me wrong. But I want you to let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as to whether or not that really is the case here. Was it valid to go out there and have these concerns about these two dudes in the 2023 and 2022 NHL entry drafts? I strongly believe so. And even heck, this season with Michael Brandsag Newgard, he kind of has that similar profile. But with these guys and their developments, are you surprised as well with how quickly they've been able to adapt and adjust to NHL preseason competition? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this British Ash Rose 99. And bye.